All right. Well, welcome to the letters toolbox. We are today going to go over the essentials for letters. And again, since you're all new to letters, it's an acronym because in Canyons, we every in education, we love our acronyms. And it stands for Language Essentials for Teachers of Reading and Spelling. And that's really what we're going to focus on, especially in this first year, is reading and spelling. So let's get started and move ahead. Right. We know our norms, as with all of our professional development. Thank you for being committed and being here and be uh, responsible and do what you need to do. Uh, being respectful, we just ask if you just mute when you're not talking. But please, since we're so small, feel free to jump in and ask questions, because really that's the point of this is to make sure all of your questions are answered. So we'll be a little bit informal that way. Feel free to unmute yourself and get your questions asked, because if you have it, probably anybody else who might not be here with us has the question. So ask all your questions. Um, if you don't mind turning on your camera, we'd love to see you, but otherwise feel free to just jump in whenever you have a question. All right, we'll start by introducing ourselves. Since you're all new teachers, you might not have had a chance to meet us yet, but you will uh, see us a lot over the next couple of years <laughs> at Letters. Oh yeah, you will. <laughs> so we are the Letters Coordinators. Woo! Woo! And when, when we were voluntold, we were one of the early um, <laughs> mandates. Now everybody in the state has to do letters because the leg legislature said so, but we were voluntold before the legislature said so. And you guys are part of the group that's starting with the rest of the state. But a year and a half ago, our district was prioritized because of some of our data to start early. And we wanted to make sure that we were doing the best implementation that we could. And so our district set aside two specialist roles to support implementation of learning. And so that is me and Lee. I'm Leslie Robinette. And uh, uh, you can see these are some of the things that we both are. We're both coaches, moms. Te we've been teachers. I was in the classroom for 16 years, uh, secondary. Uh, I learned about the science of reading through letters. This is my sixth time through letters. <laughs> and this is my 27th year in education. And my name is Lee Anstott, and I um, started um, my teaching career in California, and I also taught in Michigan for several years, and my children were born then uh, there. I have two daughters um, who one is now a doctor and the other one is a social worker at the U, and um, then I came to Canyons um, when they, in the first year when they introduced coaching and I was a, an achievement coach for a couple of years. And then I became the coach of coaches for the elementary coaches and was that for about, I don't know, 10 years or something. And um, then last year, Leslie and I were tapped to work on the letters project um, and I, I know a lot about the science of reading because I was a tutor in Michigan for a nonprofit organization that used the Orton-Gillingham method for um, teaching reading, writing, and spelling for dyslexic students. And um, so I'm, I've been familiar in using a lot of the routines and I know how effective it is. Um, and if we can do these things with our kids in our classrooms, I am just, I, I, I know that it absolutely works and improves their outcomes. So um, I'm really excited to um, continue to grow my skills and all the skills of all the teachers in all our schools, in all the districts. Other than that, it's no big deal. Not very <laughs> ambitious. Awesome. Looks like I've let everybody in, right? Um, is there yep. one at the top? It's me. So. Oh, okay. Yes. All right. So as with everything we do, everything, uh, all of our PD and all of our decisions come back to our MTSS framework. And today, and with letters, we're really focusing on the academic areas. 
the knowledge you'll learn from letters applies to pretty much all of the parts of all of our instructional priorities because it'll inform your teaching of the standards. It'll relate to uh, all of the other parts like structured classroom discussion and, and systematic vocabulary. So really, we're really just giving you a lot of in-depth knowledge that will support all of the instructional priorities. Okay, uh, back to our framework, you can see too along the top, we really are focusing on the academic and behavioral instruction, data for decision making and team based problem solving. So you're going to get the knowledge to teach all of the standards and using the instructional priorities. And also we'll look at a lot of data to see how we're doing and inform your teaching. And you'll do a lot of this with your team. And also we're using the wiser strategies if you remember back to district day. The wiser strategies include uh, writing, reading, inquiry, and uh, scaffolded discussion. So we'll use those through letters and in our PD today. All right, so our learning intentions are, we will review all the components of the letters program and expectations for successful completion. And we'll also discuss why each is important. So hopefully at the end of our half hour together, you know everything that's expected and why it's set up that way, because I think that why is really important about, uh, about letters. So our success criteria is you'll know you are successful when you can tell someone else what the components of letters are and why they're important. We really wanna make sure everybody gets that knowledge. All right. The tools in your toolbox. So everything letters. The first thing and the most important one is your manual. Hopefully you all got your volume one manual. Make sure we didn't mistakenly give you volume two. I know I did that to at least one person, but <laughs> <laughs> you all got your manual. And that's where you're going to start is with your manual. The process will be that you'll read a section. So as it's divided in, it's divided into units, four units for the first manual. And within each of those units, there are eight sections in the first manual. So you'll start with your manual and read a section. And then when you finish that section, then you'll go to the letters platform. And hopefully sometime last week, you received an email from Lexia with your login information. And if you didn't, shoot us an email, either of us, and we'll make sure that you get that. And that's the next step. And in the platform, there are a series of videos and activities that align with the um, learning that was from that section. So that's why you're gonna wanna do a section in the, in the book, then go and do the activities on the platform that support that section. And then there's the Canvas course. And we'll talk about that a little bit more, but that's just where we're housing the bridge to practice. The bridge to practice is a requirement of letters and we're housing your um, thoughtful reflections, your reflections in our Canvas course. You should also have been invited to that Canvas course. The other part is the letters assessments. We're gonna talk about them. And then we have a face-to-face -face training and follow-up coaching. So go ahead and talk about them. I might have talked about manual for you, so. That's okay. <laughs> so the manual is the first, first piece of your toolbox that you are going to really um, make use of as you familiarize yourself with the information and in letters. Um, it's very well written. There's a lot of graphics and there are a lot of pictures and there's a lot of um it's it's just it's easy to read it's it's it is all very research based but it's not like reading a heavy textbook and i think because of the way that it's bound these are your books and you can you can write on them you can put sticky notes in them you can annotate you can do i mean if you lose it, it that that's not so good but um you know, use it to the best of, of your capability because it's, it's yours, yours to consume and use the way you need to. Um, and so you're going to, like I said, just, or like Leslie said, read each session within the unit 
And unit one is kind of different than all the other ones. Unit one um, is a little drier. It's a little um, more founded in research and why reading is so difficult and all the things that need to be happening in a student's brain in order for them to be able to successfully master the skill of reading, spelling, and language. Language is, when you think about it, it's so complex. So um, this year we will be doing units one and two from units from volume one in your book. And that will give you kind of some breathing room and some exposure to what the content is. But we really start in with the new routines and content for phonological awareness in unit two. And that's where the rubber really starts hitting the road and you'll, you'll really get into it and be expected to kind of do more with your case study students. So buckle up, here we go. <laughs> awesome. All right, so you've read unit one, session one. Next thing you're going to do is go to the letters platform. And so reading it will give you the background knowledge what the platform does is it gives you like that second dose, especially things that it's like our close reading re routine that you read three times. Letters is kind of doing that in that you get your first dip in the book and then you get your second read in the platform. So it takes the ideas that you read about and it shows examples of teachers in the classroom doing some of the lessons or talking about what it meant to them or them going through the process. So why the platform is to have a second dip with the material and process it and process it in a different way by seeing teachers do the activities or talk about the activities. There are um, videos, there are interactive activities, there is a chance to journal, just kind of a note how much or whatever you journal in the platform is up to you. Um, nobody looks at that. So that's just to support your learning. So something to keep in mind. Um, this helps you go again back to the materials and revisit it all and you can go quickly and do the whole session in one sitting uh, or you can break it down into smaller parts generally the platform takes about an hour to an hour and a half so you can keep that in mind that it's going to be total even though you can do it in five minute um, parts and it will save where you were so if you only have five minutes, you wanted to do part of it, you could do one activity and it saves where you are. So that's something um, that's important to know. And then at the end of each session, there's a little five question quiz that we'll talk a little bit more about in a minute. Yeah. Um, so then there's the Canvas course. And um, you've probably heard a whole lot of information swirling about the, the Canvas course. Um, you will be expected to complete the Canvas course for units one through five, as did everyone that started last year. So the expectation for this new group and the group that has gone through previously is the same. So um, the bridge to practice is a critical part of letters because in the graphic on the screen that you can, can see, if you go to a presentation of theory and you're there and you you attain the concept, 85% of it, you'll get the skill, you'll get about 15% of it, and the application in the classroom will transfer about 5 to 10%. Modeling, it's almost the same, and the transfer to the classroom is 5 to 10%. So again, if you go to a training that's, you know, practice and low risk feedback, you can see the numbers. Again, the transfers 10 to 15%. With coaching to support the components of the training, you have 80 to 90% application in the classroom, which is where the rubber hits the road because the purpose of doing all this work is to learn best practices for our instruction so that our kids will have the best student output they can. So we really want to impact their student learning by implementing the routines and the procedures and the strategies that are presented in letters. And that's why the bridge to practices are so important um, and why you will be 
you, you're going to submit them in Canvas. And basically the, the deal is if you complete the assignment and we can tell that you did it thoughtfully and you were you know, conscious when you did it <laughs> and you did it completely, then you will get full credit. Um, if you don't complete the assignment, there's a rubric and, and we will let you know exactly what part we did not see. Um, and if you're having trouble submitting an assignment, just let us know. We really do not want submitting the assignments in Canvas to be the hardest part of your life. There is a very common error that we, we know happens frequently. So just kind of a, a pre-correction for that is make sure that in the upper right-hand corner, when you submit your assignments in Canvas, you have your share settings set to anyone with the link in Canyons because otherwise we cannot open your assignments. And then we will make a comment on your assignment and give you a zero and you'll go, oh, harumph, but I did it. And then we'll say, but we can't access it. So um, there's just a little tip about the access thing to make sure we have access. And those all are on Google Slides and you can just type your assignment right on the slide. You don't have to put it in a PowerPoint. You don't have to put it in something else and take a picture and upload it and download it and sideload it. Keep it simple. Okay? And if you have questions, that's what Leslie and I do. We're, we're here to support you in getting all this done. So it is a lot of work and it's really important work, but you are not alone ever because you have us. That is our job. So let us help you. And just um, a word about that with the workflow. So as you're working through the platform, you get finished with the session and then it has the bridge to practice part. So you're welcome to look at it in the letters platform. But what we did is we took their worksheets and we simplified them. Like they might have seven or eight steps that they want you to do. And we took them and put them on like one page so you can get that one get it all together in one page. So when you get to the bridge to practice part in the platform, I wouldn't even open it. I'd go to Canvas because it's simplified version um, and aligns with CSD's goals and then go back to the platform for the quiz. So just keep that in mind. Also for each of those bridge to practice assignments, you can see um, that we have exemplars. We took some uh, of our, uh, great assignments from last year, teachers who just did a really stellar job and uh, put them with the assignments. So you can see some exemplars of about what it might look like. So feel free to do that when you're starting the assignments, take a look at those exemplars. Okay, now assessments. There are a couple of assessments. The first is the quiz. And the quiz is, like I said, at the end of each section, it's a five question quiz and it's measuring your understanding of that session. The other is a mastery assessment and that's your understanding of the whole unit. So after you do all eight sessions of unit one, then you'll do the mastery assessment. Mastery assessments are longer. They require you to remember all of the information from all eight of the sessions. Um, and you only have two tries to take it and achieve 80% letters for letters certification. They require that you achieve 80% mastery of the unit assessment. So on the quizzes, I might miss two and not feel bad. But on the uh, mastery assessment at the end of the unit, they're usually, I've seen anywhere from 10 to 20 questions, and you have to get 80%. So we strongly encourage you to get together with other people in your building who are going through letters and do the assessments together so that you have your combined memory. But also, if you do it, then... Um, like one of you could submit it and find out which ones you might need to look up and then the other person can submit it. And hopefully before the first person submits their second time, they've figured out the right answer by having a teammate submit it. So we strongly suggest that you find other people in your building to take um, your assessments with. 
or if you are Apple teachers, maybe in one of your um, Apple work sessions, maybe the Apple teachers can work together to take it as well. So that's what we wanted to talk about with assessments. And again, if you have any questions, let us know. Will you check the chat? Um, All right, the face-to-face -face trainings. So you will be invited to the face-to-face -face trainings and we do have um, Lynn Kuhn, who is a letter, a Voyager Sopris Lexia letters trainer, national person here. And she is doing all of our sessions for Canyon School District this year. Um, we're the only people that she's doing that for. And we've had a long-term relationship with Lynn and she's absolutely magnificent. Um, so the face-to-face -face trainings are the kind of culmination of your learning for each unit. So you, you do your reading, you do your sessions in the platform, you do your bridge to practices in Canvas, and then you come for your face-to-face -face training at the end of all, when all that work is complete. Um, the face-to-face -face is a, an application piece for all of the learning that you've been doing. Um, and it gives you an opportunity to collaborate with others who have been doing the same learning as you have over the same time frame. So they're they're really fun. They are um, they're informative. They give you a chance to ask questions or bounce ideas off of colleagues. Um, and it's just it's an interactive, really fun day. And you will get time to do. Um, some planning and some problem solving and have great discussions with colleagues. So um, they're, they're a really fun part of the program. And we're so glad that we have Lynn here this year to, to be with us in person. Awesome. Um, I saw in the chat, a couple of you are the only ones at your school. And so uh, least a couple of you can get together, but I think it would be a good idea. Maybe we could put out an announcement if anybody else is interested that you can zoom in because I do think there's a lot of benefits taking it together. And your coach can be really helpful with that too. Yeah. So so you're never alone. Your coach has been through all of this. So they're a great support for you. Awesome. Okay, you too. All right. So coaching. Let's talk about coaching. Coaching. <laughs> um so coaching is kind of the linchpin for implementation. And from the slide we shared earlier about the, you know, 80 to 90% application, coaching is the piece that is going to move the dial on student outcomes. And you will learn a lot of information and um, your coach will be available to help support you answering questions in your PLC meetings. They will also be coming to do observations. And Leslie and I go out to the schools and do observations at, for every unit. Um, and so we'll see a few teachers at your school. If you're the only one at your school, we probably won't see you every time because that's a lot of pressure on you. Um, but it's the coaching piece gives you an opportunity to have a conversation about your practice in your classroom and what you are doing brilliantly. And the observations are so magnificent. They do, we go and see teachers doing the most fabulous stuff and the kids are engaged and involved and they're moving and they're talking and they're, it's, it, they're just, it's unbelievable. And so, um, yes, it is a lot of work, but it is also, your coach is, is your greatest support probably, you know, besides Leslie and I, because we're the best. <laughs> um, but that is, it's a really critical piece of um, the implementation piece. Um, for fourth and fifth grades, never mind, you don't need to know about that because none of you yes, will I be am. in fourth or fifth <laughs> grade. So you will be having conversations about um, your implementation of the letters practices. And again, that really starts in unit two where we're talking about routines and strategies for specific skills. I would just add for the first four units, we use the same form, the foundations walkthrough form that is also in the instructional guides. And so what's really exciting, what we learned last year through the first four units is just seeing the growth 
of implementation. So when we come first unit, it's still kind of up about the science of, the, of reading. And so it's kind of a baseline data. And then by unit four, we'll be able to see your growth of implementation as well. So that's kind of exciting. All right, so we have we are here for support. We have exemplars for um, all of the bridge to practices. We can come out and model if when it gets to like PA and you're like, I really like this activity. I'm not sure how it would look in my class. We'd be happy to come out and do some modeling or some planning with you. So anything that we can do to help, please let us know. Um, we've divided our schools, but we're also happy to help anybody doesn't matter which school. So reach out if you need anything. Um, and before we end, do you have any questions that we haven't answered? I see a couple head shakes. Is it normal to be apprehensive? <laughs> yes, because it sounds like a lot, right? And um, well, depending on when you graduated too, when you went through your pre-service program, if you didn't have any of this in your pre-service, it's harder. It's a lot. It's brain drain. Um, like, and I told you this is my sixth time through. It was probably the fourth time through before it cemented. <laughs> um, so it's okay and it's normal to be apprehensive. Don't be apprehensive about, am I going to do it right? Because yeah. it's there's not a right. If you're doing it and you're trying, we're going to happy csd is going to be happy your kids are going to grow um, and there is more than one way to do it right because this is more about giving you the knowledge to be able to make decisions and try new things in your classroom so there's not necessarily a right way or a right answer um, the right thing to do is that you try things and you reflect on how it impacted your students and that's the only right that there is. So don't be apprehensive about if you're doing it right or wrong or or don't get it the first time. That's why you go back and that's why we revisit it the day of. So if there's something that you've read about and you've watched the videos and you're still not clear, that's what our face-to-face uh, -face day will do. So don't be apprehensive about any of that. The one thing you probably or legitimate to be apprehensive about is how do I have the time to do this when I'm a new teacher <laughs> and I'm figuring out wonders and 95% and everything else. So do, with that, just do your best. And I think you'll find too that with letters, because it is so engaging and the activities that are um, given to you to try with your students are so engaging that behavior during when you are teaching PA or your phonics um, block or or even like now with the other group, we're in the comprehension and and because they are doing those activities, the kids are engaged with the teacher, they're engaged with each other. Mm -hmm. They're having really deep conversation using vocabulary that is astoundingly beautiful. And so I think you'll find that that your behaviors in your classroom will, it, improve. You always have pickles, but um, they do improve. And so your, your engaging instruction, I think, is your, your best defense against bad behavior. And I think you will find that this helps a lot with that. It does, because uh, it's just going to inform your teaching. And that's great for all of us. So the last thing, I don't think I have a slide, but we want to make sure you know, is at the end, after you've read it and done the platform and done your bridge practice and come to your in-person, you're going to get $400 so, per unit, per unit. So um, that's a nice little boost. So a little reward. The district does know how much work it is and that you will probably be doing some of the outside of your teaching time, probably most of it. Most of it. Um, so a little bit of a stipend is meant to um, defray some of that pain. So that being said, thank you guys for being here. We, um, since there are so few of you, we're just gonna send you all a nice little prize for being here. <laughs> we really appreciate you logging in um, and we appreciate you doing the letters work and let us know if you need anything.
yeah, we, we, you can email us, you can text us, you can set up a smoke signal and we'll <laughs> respond. I promise. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you all soon. Try this recording.